There you go. Okay, why do why the book was needed? First, we'll talk a little bit about the man himself, Victor Hugo Green. And that's a great name because Victor Hugo, I know you all know about Victor Hugo. But Victor Hugo Green was an African American who was born in New York City around 1892. And uh, as a young man, he got one of the better jobs that an African American can have. And that's working with the post office. And I can say that because I worked for the post office in Harrisburg for 35 years. Uh, he was a letter carrier, which I was not, but he was a letter carrier. And the thing, what, the thing that made a job with the post office so good for a letter for a man, African American man, you had a job for life. As they tell you, if you keep your nose clean, don't get into trouble, you have a job for life, and you're going to get a good pension. So this was a good job for him. In 1917, when World War I broke out, he thought he was exempt because he was a letter carrier. But unfortunately, and maybe fortunately for him, he was drafted into uh, the 350th Field Artillery Battalion, which he did, and he did serve in France. So he did get to see something other than Manhattan. He saw Manhattan, which was the chief city in the United States, but he also got to see Paris. Coming back to the United States, he continued his job at the post office. Now, we're not totally sure where you get this idea from the Green Book, but as a letter carrier, you're out and you meet people. You're in every community. Well, we, we hear that uh, you heard about possibly a Jewish book. There was a guide for Jews that were traveling. They were having problems traveling. That they may have uh, encountered discrimination. Not totally sure about this, but in 1935, he had the idea, he said, I'm going to make a book just for New York City. And in this book, I'm going to list the places that I know because my experience as a letter carrier and working with other African-American letter carriers, I know that people, African-Americans, would be welcome. So he, went, he published his first book, The Green Book. It was the 1936 edition. And it, I think it was either published in April or May. But it only included the city of New York, which was a good thing in a sense because uh, in the Depression, 1936, you had uh, the people in, for instance, in Harrisburg. Where did they travel to? Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York. New York is on the eastern coast is a center for African American culture. You have Harlem, you have, it's a destination point. So the first book went well, covering just New York City. The next year, he expanded it to cover other cities on the east coast. And uh, that started the Green Book. Uh, up until 1942, it was published but roughly 15,000 copies a year. And it basically covered all the major cities in each state east of the Mississippi. East of the Mississippi. Do you have any the slides? Yeah, you just click it. Do you know how to click it? We'll try. Well, I clicked the other one. I don't know what you did, Kevin. <laughs> I didn't turn it off, did I? Yeah, you did, actually. You turned it off. How did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, you're back. It's this one. Okay. It's the right one. It's the right That's one. what I wanted to show. Yeah, see what that was. <laughs> now, working along with him, you see his wife, Alma Green. She was also involved in this project, especially, especially at the end. She was a, a source of information and help to him in the beginning, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about her a little later. But there's a picture of what the, the Victor Hugo looks like and his beautiful wife. And there, as I mentioned, he was in the 350th Field Artillery. And that may not be an actual picture of him. No. That's uh -huh. an idea of what yeah, the, the soldiers would have looked like. Now, and there he is as a letter carrier. That's not his Imagining. 
quickly I come to 1940. Before I get to the 1940 listings, just to mention that uh, sometimes it said the Gleam book was published from 1936 to 1967. That's not true. It was not published during World War II, from 1942 to 1945. It was not published. And primarily because there was very little travel. Ra gasoline was rationed in World War II. And those of you out in this audience that are old enough to know it, uh, it was very, uh, gas was rationed and uh, people did very little traveling. Now, except on trains, you could ride trains at that time. To show you here, this is the, a clipping from the 1947 listing. And uh, this is Harrisburg. Hotels. Alexander, 7th and Bose, Jackson, 1004. I'm going to talk a little bit about each one. Alexander, 7th and Bose. If any of you know the, uh, the musician uh, that's related to the Alexander family, uh, Marge Alexander, and her uh, margin or majors. Probably heard of, heard of that group. Well, that's that was her family. Seventh and Bose. Jackson, <coughs> ten oh four North Sixth Street. That's the Jackson House. Now that one's still standing. Everybody knows where the Jackson House is. The big mural on the side. Jack's Hotel, twelve oh eight North Sixth Street. That's no longer standing. But that and do anybody remember Jack's Hotel? Well, that was my father's hotel. So I remember, yes. And there's always been confusion. Like I said, some told somebody, oh, it's too many Jacksons. German Jackson and my father, Caleb Jackson, were always confused. They looked a little bit alike, and they both had Jackson's name, and they both had a hotel. So the Jackson Hotel was 1208. That was torn down in 1960. In 1960, Sixth Street, as you see it now, the old Sixth Street was relocated. And the 6th Street you see now is what developed. Before that, 6th Street ran, and we have maps here, 6th Street ran directly up 6th Street. For instance, you came out of the Broad Street Market, and you had to walk up a hill to get to 6th Street. Now, when 6th Street was rebuilt, it was curved down, so that it comes down from uh, Hurst Street, it comes down to uh, the Broad Street Market and curves back up to Rally. Tourist homes. Uh, Mrs. H. Carter, 606 Foster Street. Mrs. D. W. D. Jones, 613 Foster Street. Those are gone. Those, house, those uh, houses on Foster Street are now uh, probably where the uh, Keystone Building is, mm -hmm. in that area. Right. Yes. It says Foster and Forster. So is that well, the same? Well, it's, it's the same, though. It it's is? Maybe, maybe a misspelling, but it's the same it's street. Curious. Beauty Powers, the Roland, 1321 North 6th Street. And Ruth Roland was the proprietor of that. Uh, if anybody have ever heard of the James Roland School in Harrisburg? Yeah. That was named for her brother, James Roland, who was a lawyer. Barbershops, that's Jack's Barbershop. And there again, that was my father, Jack's Barbershop, who once said that. That building is still standing. Is that, that was right next to the Jackson yeah. House? Yes. It's right next door to the Jackson House. It's an empty space now? It's empty space now. And you probably currently know that the McCoy brothers yeah, are renovating yeah. the Curtis Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. Somebody's renovating uh, the Jackson House, and somebody's renovating uh, Jack's Barbershop. Mm -hmm. So that's coming back. We also had a service station at uh, 417 Broad Street. That would have been right across from the Broad Street Market. Also inside the 1947 issue listed Negro yeah. schools, colleges. See in Pennsylvania, they listed Cheney and Lincoln. And this by and also 1947 issue covered the entire United States. It's the first one after World War II. It covered the entire United States. And the listing of colleges covered every state that had primarily the historical black colleges. Also, the black newspapers were listed, as you can see, from Pennsylvania and New York. Okay. And now, I'm going to show you some locations in New York. 